I know what Dan's thinking right now.
Holland College is located in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada. My name is Jess Cameron, the head coach of the Holland Hurricanes women's hockey team. The goals of the Holland Hurricanes uh, hockey program is to make it a reputable uh, varsity program um, with a high level of compete with other teams around Atlantic Canada. Life on Prince Edward Island is really like a sense of community. It is very nice and friendly. You can always find a friend or someone that you know. It's super like a small town atmosphere. Academic life is good. It's challenging. I still get through with the support of my teachers and the classmates. But as long as you're organized, like it's it's pretty easy to manage. My impression on my instructors are amazing. They care about your future goals. They're passionate to what they're teaching. They really help balance the student athlete lifestyle. I think valuable aspects of playing post-secondary hockey is pretty limitless, starting off with time management. Uh, I do believe that athletics help uh, keep students on track, knowing when assignments have to be done and homework has to be done before they get to the rink is actually a really helpful uh, piece in the student athlete's uh, experience. To be able to continue playing high level hockey is really important for me. I've been playing hockey since I was a little girl and being able to continue to play while going to school means a lot. Another positive aspect of playing a sport at the post-secondary level is uh, having an immediate support group. 20 odd teammates and coaches uh, is just an extra helping hand in the college process. The best part of being a student athlete is probably like you see your teammates all the time and then you see them at school and at the gym and it's just like you really have a sense of belonging. Being able to take my athletic skills and my academic skills and put them together, no matter where you go, around campus and there's always people like telling you like oh you had a good game or something like that so it's really a positive environment. One of the benefits of being an athlete at Holland College is the athletics department support, tons of media coverage, athletes of the week, uh, walking around campus. It's just a really positive environment with athletes from all sports interacting, smiling, talking about their performances over the weekend. My impressions on my coaches this year are amazing. They give us a lot of like really good feedback. It's nice having three female coaches. They've all played high level hockey so they know like how to balance like your schoolwork and with your practice time and game time and they're always there at the gym to like cheer us on and stuff so it's really supportive. As a coach uh, while I'm recruiting I'm definitely looking for a good balance in you know speed, skill and hockey IQ. They need to be ready to compete every day and have the commitment level to play at a collegiate level. We're looking for players that are well-rounded individuals um, we look for good, strong characters in our locker room. They also have to be able to balance a uh, collegiate academic schedule um, with their athletic experience. Atlanta, Canada definitely has a high level of women's hockey. The competition that we play against is very talented girls. Our ages kind of vary from younger athletes to a little bit older athletes, but everybody's really competitive. If someone was interested in enrolling at Holland College, I would encourage them to head over to hollandcollege.com, check out which programs they may be interested in, uh, fill out a player profile to alert me of your interest in hockey, and feel free to reach out with any questions about the application process or about the hockey program.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Cavendish Farms Wellness Center in Montague, PEI, for game two of the Atlantic Collegiate Hockey Association Championship between the Acadia University Axe Women and the Cape Breton University Capers. My name is Jordy Carraher. I'll be doing play-by-play -play here for you this morning. The Axe Women looking to bounce back after a 4-3 overtime loss to the Holland College Hurricanes in last night's contest. And for the Capers, this will be their first game of the weekend, so we'll see how this one shakes out. As the teams hit the ice here, prior to puck drop, we will recognize the league all-stars from the Capers from this past season. So the next voice you'll hear will be that of the public address announcer. And a well-deserved honor here for Leah Byrne of the Capers, named the first team. Led the league in goals this year with eight. Byrne is a product of Glace Bay, Nova Scotia. And a steadying presence on the back end. Capers captain Victoria McIntyre, also named an ACHA All-Star, this time on the second team. And Robin LeBlanc rounds out the Capers All-Star selections here for this season. LeBlanc is a product of New Waterford, Nova Scotia. And you hear it there, goalie change for the Axe Women, Sarah Jackson in this evening, or this morning. Starting defense, Peyton Hayes. 
And here we go. We're just about set for puck drop here at the Cavendish Farms Wellness Center in Montague PEI. Once again, it's your Cape Breton University capers. They'll be in orange with the white sleeves. And they're going against the Acadia University Axe women. They'll be in blue with the red numbers with white trim. This morning, starting goaltenders for Acadia, we have ACHA first team all-star Sarah Jackson. Four games this season, three victories with a shutout and a goals against average of one. And for Cape Breton, it'll be Kayla Osmond in goal. Five games, a win and four losses, goals against average of 340. And now this will be a big one for both sides here, particularly for the Axe women following last night's overtime loss. Looking for two points here this morning. And we're all set to go here. And that pucks back to Victoria McIntyre, just named an ACHA All-Star a moment ago. Atkinson drops that one back. And the Capers will keep it in deep here. That was Byrne trying to center the puck. And here's Atkinson with it. She chips it up for Lily Ryan. And now Ali Norris has it at center ice. Takes the Capers blue line, but loses the handle on that. Cape Breton's able to clear. And Ryan back for it here. She'll send that one across. Now it's up to Atkinson who crosses the Cape Breton blue line. And it looks like Byrne just about got it back, but Atkinson will just fire it in behind the Cape Breton net. Ryan chips that one over. She'll go off for a change here as well. And now McIntyre sends it up. Now Byrne's got it. Leah Byrne, the league's leading goal scorer this year. Eight goals in eight games. She's working her way into the zone. Fires that one wide. And Sage Breton... With it there now on the half boards. We got some help from Andrea Pike. A couple of capers in there as well. Chip back to the point. And now the Axe women have it again. Here's Regan Hiltz with it. But another turnover, and Cape Breton has some pressure going here. And sent out to the point. And the shot comes in. Hits a couple of bodies and goes off to the corner. And Jackson will freeze that one. Face off to her right. So we're early in this one. A minute and a half in, still scoreless. And Byrne will take the draw against Legier. Here, Legier takes that one for Acadia. But the Capers have it at the point. Shot in there from number eight, Charlotte Music. That goes wide. And Byrne was unable to get it out. Here's Maddie Carey with it. Carey's got some open ice here. And can't quite get the shot off. Osmond will cover that one up. Face off to her left. So good job by the Capers there to get back and thwart the potential breakaway opportunity there for Maddie Carey, number seven. Distinguishable once again by the red helmet. And Cape Breton wins that draw cleanly. Send it around the boards. And now Carey's got it. Carey up for Brooks Switzer. And we just had the buzzer go off. It looks like it might have gotten stuck there for a moment. We've got a halt in the play. Yeah, not quite sure what was going on there. But it looks like the linesman and the timekeeper are clearing it up. Looks like we got a little bit of a my bad there, potentially. Nevertheless, we've got a face-off here to the left of Kayla Osmond. And Acadia clearly less than thrilled as they had possession in the zone at the time. But Legier sends that one forward off the draw. Abby Legier with it. She scored a goal last night for the Axe women as it's sent back to the point. And the Axe women still have it. Legier's got it back. We'll cycle that one back for Switzer. And good pressure here from the Capers in the early going. Nice move there from Robin LeBlanc to poke that one forward. Sends that one out. That was over to Emma Rowland. She's still got it from her knees to LeBlanc. Couldn't quite get the shot off. Now McIntyre will go back for it, but this will be called icing on the Axe women. 
Yeah, good momentum here from the Capers to start. Bear in mind, of course, Acadia coming off a bit of limited rest after last night's game went to double overtime. So we'll see how they respond here, particularly with the uh, fresh legs for the Capers. And now Lily Ryan's got it on the half board. Burn picks that one off. But Acadia comes, or Cape Breton, excuse me, comes out with it. That's Carly McNeil with it. She'll send that one around the net. Byrne gets to that one first. Yeah, Byrne being pressured by a couple of Axe women there. And now Norris tries to chip it out, but it goes back into the Acadia zone. And that one is sent forward. And here's Ryan making her way out, trying to find Norris, but McIntyre will intercept that. And that is going to be called offside on the Axe Women. So the face-off will come outside the Cape Breton zone. Eleven thirty-five remaining here in this first period. Of course, we're still scoreless. And Pike wins the draw for Acadia. Firth sends that one up. And here's Regan Hiltz with it. Hilt's being pressured by a couple of capers there. And LeBlanc was battling there as well with Cape Breton with it behind their own net. And the shot in from Madison Firth. That gets blocked. Now LeBlanc with it for Cape Breton. Robin LeBlanc doing a good job of shielding the puck. Nice little chip play there from number 19 for the capers. That's Nicole Sloan. Sloan's still with it. She'll send that one around the net. But that one's intercepted. That was by Firth, and now it's pushed forward. Hiltz couldn't quite corral it in her skates. And here's Sage Breton sending it forward. And Acadia's able to keep that one in. Firth at the line. And now Regan Hiltz with it. She tries to center it, but that one gets blocked. And Hiltz unable to get the handle on that one, and here comes Cape Breton. But... They're just going to chip that one into the zone and go off on a change. The Axe women back to corral it here. Firth trying to send that one forward. Got blocked there by number six, Emma Rowland. And good board battle. Here's Burns getting that puck there. She got it from Switzer. Burns sends that one on net just a little bit wide. And Sarah Cottrell will send that one forward for Acadia. And she follows that in. A couple of capers in there, and they eventually do come out with it. Oh, puck bounces off the referee there. Acadia gets it right back in the zone. There's Legier with it again. And there's Cottrell battling in the corner with, I believe, McIntyre down there. Yes, it is indeed the capers captain. A couple more Axe women and capers joining in on the battle. And that one's kept in the zone by Harvey. Over to Legier. Back to Brandy Harvey. Harvey will send that one on net. The redirect doesn't quite go. Legier tries to get that one on net. That's blocked off by Hayes. And Acadia still with it here. Good pressure in the zone, but that pass doesn't find a home. And it'll be Leah Byrne coming up here for Cape Breton. She takes it into the Acadia zone. Nice move from Byrne. And oh, the backhand just soars high and wide there on Jackson. And that puck gets steered away. And Roland battling Atkinson with it behind the uh, Acadia net. And now Lily Ryan's got it at the half boards. Sends it forward for Allie Norris. She had a goal and an assist last night, so she's looking to build on that performance. And Cape Breton gets it back. They do get it out of the zone. Haley Dimmick out of Silk, BC. She sends that one back in. And back to retrieve it is Jody Dauphiny out of Glace Bay, Nova Scotia. Dauphiny is still with it. Knocked down by Ryan, the clearing attempt. And Norris with a shot on goal. And Osman, she's going to cover that one up once she corrals the rebound. Face off to her left here with 8.13 remaining in this first period. Fans, 
And Byrne controls the draw there for the Capers. Now McIntyre with it behind the net. Victoria McIntyre bringing that one out. She'll send that one up for Byrne. Leah Byrne trying to get turned around in the neutral zone. Gains the Acadia blue line. Leah Byrne still with it now. Nice cut. Couldn't quite get in. Byrne will send that one to the point. And here's Charlotte Music with it. Couldn't quite get the shot through. And there's Atkinson with it trying to find Ryan. But Victoria McIntyre will get that one back. And trying to center that was Sloan. But Acadia's got it here once more. Sage Breton, but uh, neutral zone. It's kind of going back and forth here as the Caprils will uh, chip it back in. Madison Firth here with it. And now the Capers have it at their own blue line. Content to reset. There's number 66, Aaron Casibo. And that one's fired on net. Osmond will cover that one up. And she'll get a face off to her left in her own zone. 7.09 left in this first period. Still scoreless. And LeBlanc wins that face off cleanly for the Capers. Clearing attempt off the glass. It gets by Casivo at the blue line. And now Firth with it. And bringing it forward there was Hiltz. Regan Hiltz still with it, tries to center it. And there's Pike on the doorstep. And she can't quite push that one in. It looks like the referees brought a halt to the play. And we'll see another face off here, I believe, to the left, or maybe they're bringing it outside. No, they're, no they are gonna keep it in the zone here. And Byrne wins that draw for Cape Breton. Caper's strong in the face-off circle here early this morning. And Byrne gets it two on one here for Cape Breton. She's got McNeil up the middle of the ice, pass to McNeil, and what a save by Sarah Jackson. First big stop here in the morning for Acadia. And Breton brings it up for the Axe women, trying to find Legier. And Legier battling Dauphiny for in the corner. Tries to find Carey. And Switzer, she can't quite get it to go on the doorstep. Legier with it. Lots of bodies in front of the Cape Breton goal here. As Legier sends it out to the point for Amelia Cromwell. Back down to Legier. Legier and Dauphiny battling for it here. And that one's sent around the net by Byrne. But Acadia sends it right back down. And Maddie Carey here with it. Carey sends that one back around the other way for Legier. Sends it back to Cromwell. Cromwell fires from the point. That one just goes wide. And the Capers attempted clearing attempt. And they do get it out here eventually. Cromwell back to retrieve it for the Axe women. Still scoreless here in this first period. Five and a half left to play. And Byrne fires it down there. Here's Sloan with it. Sloan being pressured by Harvey behind the net. Centering pass, intercepted. Oh, puck gets out into the crease for Jackson. She's able to steer that one away. And here's Melissa Atkinson with it. She chips that one up to Carey. And a turnover in the zone here. Shot. That one's redirected. That was Sloan with the shot attempt. And the Axe women get it out here. Atkinson with it. Sends it up to Ryan. Lily Ryan with a bit of open ice. She is watched by Hayes there on the far side. Now Atkinson with it. Atkinson, good puck protection behind the net here. And the Capers attempt to clear it once more, but that is stopped at the line. And another clearing attempt. Acadia still able to keep it in. And that puck just goes a little bit wide. Shot courtesy of Jesse McIntyre there as Ryan brings it up to the top of the faceoff circle. And shot by McIntyre, that's blocked. And shot attempt there from Norris. Osmond wise to just cover that one up and she'll get a faceoff to her right for her efforts. 4-11 left in this first period, still scoreless between the Axe women and the Capers.
And a scramble draw here. And Capers will come out with possession. And that's Denny in there on the boards for the Capers. She's got a couple of Axe women pressuring her down there. And Cape Breton does come out with it. That's Abby McDonald chipping it up. But Acadia sends it right back down. And Atkinson sends that one forward for Norris. Her shot just goes a little bit wide. And here's Byrne with it. Leah Byrne centering pass. Unable to fully connect with McDonald there. And Atkinson retrieves it for the Axe women. Melissa Atkinson up the middle for Ryan. Can't quite get a handle on that. Dauphiny pressuring her on the back check. And Jody Dauphiny, she'll send that one back up the ice. And now Madison Firth with it for the Axe women. Firth gains center ice. She'll fire that one down. No icing. And now Jody Dauphiny with it. Dauphiny stick handling through her own zone. She's got a little bit of open ice here. Gains the red line. And that extra move at the blue line, that puts Byrne offside. So with three minutes remaining here in this first period, we're still scoreless. Pretty even back and forth contest here to start the frame. And Cape Breton wins that draw cleanly. Victoria McIntyre with it. She'll send that one forward. Couldn't find LeBlanc, but McIntyre will get it right back. And here's McNeil with it. And shot there from Alexa Poirier. That was a nice stop from Jackson. McIntyre sends that one into the corner. McNeil can't quite get a handle on that. And there's Cromwell with it. And Acadia maintains possession as Hiltz chips it into the zone. Breton in pursuit, but Victoria McIntyre will get there first. Axelman send it around the net. There's Poirier. But it's turned over. Breton trying to center that one. Pressured by McNeil behind the goal line. And now Harvey with it. She'll go D to D here. Dimmick fires that one, and that one goes wide. And McNeil's attempted pass there for LeBlanc. That's going to go all the way down the ice. Icing here on the Capers. And so with 156 remaining here in this first period, we'll take the time to remind you that there will be no flood between the first and second period. So there will be a limited break in the action here before we transition from the first to the second. In other words, don't go anywhere. As Byrne had control of the draw, but now Acadia's got it. Switzer sends it to the middle of the net, and Abby Legere scores! Abby Legere got right into the slot, and that's her second of the tournament. Goes high on Osmond, and it's a 1-0 Axe Woman lead. And so, with 1.48 remaining in this first period, Acadia goes up by a score of 1-0. Once again, that's Legere's second of the weekend here. And the Capers looking to respond pretty quickly. Sloan pressuring there, but the Axe Women will get that out. Dauphiny back here for Cape Breton. Jody Dauphiny sends it up the middle of the ice. Nobody home as Casibo gets it for Acadia over to Madison Firth. And Brooke Switzer makes her way out of the zone for the Axe Women. Gains the Cape Breton blue line. Brooke Switzer named an ACHA All-Star last night. And unable to clear are the Capers. Casibo tries to fire that one on net. Now it gets out. And here's Leah Byrne with it. Oh, nice move there from Byrne. Can't quite get the shot off. And we've got our first penalty of the morning here. It looks like it'll be, I'm going to say, Byrne going off for hooking. And with 56 seconds remaining in the opening period, it will indeed be Leah Byrne off for the hook and it'll send Acadia to their first power play of the morning. And Atkinson on to take the draw here for Acadia. The scramble draw there, eventually controlled by the Capers. McIntyre with it behind her own net. 
Ryan there to pressure. And now Atkinson has it in the slot. Her shot just goes wide. And LeBlanc has it there for Cape Breton. Pressured by Atkinson. Now Lily Ryan's got it. Her centering pass. Nobody home. Back to the point for Norris. For Cromwell. She fires that one just wide. Acadia appears to be employing the four forwards on the power play strategy. We saw that from the Hurricanes last night as well in their matchup with the Axe women. 15 seconds left in the frame as Norris has it. She'll send it across to Cromwell. Cromwell fires. Her shot goes wide. Norris there to pick it up in the dying seconds here. Five seconds left. Ryan back to Norris. Sends it over. Atkinson can't get the shot off in time. And as the first period comes to an end, Acadia leads this one by a score of 1-0. They'll have a power play for a minute four to start the second period. And while we've got a minute here, we'll take a moment to thank some of our sponsors for the weekend. Keep it social.ca, Holland College Student Union, Sports Center Physiotherapy, Pressed for Time and Abigwit Screen Printing and Embroidery, Mind Matters Metal Performance Training, Hunter's Ale House, The Factory, Charlottetown Beer Garden, and John Brown Richmond Street Grill, Coach Atlantic, PEI Source for Sports, East Coast Cresting, Boston Pizza, Tim Hortons, Wendy's, DP Murphy Incorporated, ADL, Pepsi, the City of Charlottetown, Domino's Pizza, Holland College, Holland College Canes Camp, Holland Hurricanes Academy, and Hurricanes Physiotherapy. And so early in the second period here, Acadia up 1-0 as Regan Heltz brings it into the zone. And attempted to cycle back for Legier there, but nobody home. Now Legier, the goal scorer in the first period for the Axe women, she's got it back. Now Dimmick with it. Can't quite get the shot to go. And Osmond will cover that one up. Face off to her right. 23 seconds left in the Acadia power play to start the period. And Legier to take the draw here against Sloan. Sloan takes control of that. McIntyre fires that one around the net for Cape Breton. And it's held in at the line by Dimmick. Hiltz with it. She tries to center it. And that puck makes its way to Osmond. She'll cover that one up. Face off to her left. And the Axe women control it off the face off. Here's Cromwell with it. Back to Regan Hiltz. Hiltz takes the shot from a bad angle. Osmond able to get that one right in the chest. Face off to her left. Five seconds left in this power play. Leah Byrne set to come back on. We'll see if the Capers try any sort of stretch pass to spring her on a breakaway behind the defense here. And the Capers get control of it. But Switzer's able to chip that one down for Pike. Andrea Pike with it. Pressured by McIntyre. And now Sloan gets it out here for the Capers. And now Byrne just out of the penalty box. Pressured by Catreau there. Byrne still with it. Byrne fires. And a bit of a mishandle from Jackson, but no harm, no foul there. And Acadia is able to get that one out, and here's Sarah Catreau with it. She'll get the Cape Breton blue line, but go no further as the Capers get it back. And here's Robin LeBlanc with it. LeBlanc gains the Acadia blue line. Full head of speed here. LeBlanc tries to center that one. K 
can't find its target as we see Pike coming up, gaining the red line and into the caper zone. Andrea Pike with it. She takes the shot from the bad angle and that one eventually gets frozen. And the faceoff will come to the right of Kayla Osmond. And the Axe women control it off the draw. Here's Aaron Casibo with it. She fires. Can't quite get that one through. And Abby McDonald's able to get that one out for the Capers. And Cape Breton has it back in the neutral zone. They gain the Acadia blue line. That was fired in by Roland. And going back for that puck will be Hayes for Cape Breton. Sends that one around the net. Ali Norris there for it for Acadia. Her centering pass goes around the net. Now Lily Ryan's got it. Ryan cycles that one down for Atkinson. And Atkinson will fire it right back into that corner. Good cycle game going here for Acadia. Ryan back to Atkinson. Two player game here for the moment, but Osmond's able to cover this one up. And it'll be another face off to her left. 12.01 left in this second period. Acadia up, 1-0. And Acadia controls the face off. Ryan will send that one back into the corner. And now the Capers come out with it. Here's Byrne leading the rush. Byrne gains the red line. Or, excuse me, the Acadia zone. She fires that one a little bit wide. And now Byrne going back for it, but Casibo will get there first for the Axe women. Sends that one up for Ryan. Ryan into the Capers zone over to Atkinson in the slot. Atkinson with it. Her shot goes off a of body and goes wide. Ryan with it once again. Here is McIntyre, Jesse McIntyre, I should say. But the Capers just about got it out of the zone. Good stick check there from the Axe women. Dauphiny with it now. Dauphiny, nice stretch pass there for Byrne. Gains the Acadia blue line. Gets outside on Jesse McIntyre. And that one cycled right back around by the Capers. Burn with it, back to Dauphiny. Jody Dauphiny with it. Surveying her options. All she finds is Axe women. And now Legere with it. Abby Legere looking for her second of the morning here. And just about had it on the wraparound. Couple of opportunities here, and it goes in. Axe women score. And we'll see who gets credit. And for that, I believe that is going to be 55, Aaron Arsenault Gallant with the goal. It is Arsenault Gallant. That'll be her first of the weekend. And that'll put Acadia up by a score of 2 nothing with 10.31 left in the second period. And the Axe women take control again. Hiltz with it. Regan Hiltz fires it on net. That goes a little wide. And Cape Breton unable to clear. Hiltz still with the puck. Tried to find Pike. So that goal goes into the books as Arsenault Gallant from Legere at... 429 of this second period. And it's a big one for the Axe women. That puts them up 2-0 as Pike gets some open ice here. Two on one. She's got Hiltz coming up the middle. Pike shoots it on net. Osmond's able to track that one. It'll be a face off to her right. Meanwhile, Hiltz a little bit slow to get up after that. But it looks like she'll be all right. Acadia really starting to assert itself here early in this second period. Starting to find those legs after that game last night. And 
And off the draw, good persistence there from Ryan, unable to, or Pike, excuse me, unable to corral it though, as Roland brings it out for Cape Breton. Roland drops it back for Burn. Burn fires, and Burn through the screen. She gets one back here for the Capers. Leah Burn, the league's leading goal scorer. That's her first of the weekend, and that's a big response from the Capers. That cuts the lead in half. It's 2-1. That goal coming 59 seconds after Arsenal Galantz marker for Acadia. So that might give the uh, Cape Breton bench a little bit of energy here in this middle part of the period. And the Axe women control it off the draw. Norris brings it in. Allie Norris going wide. Tried to find Ryan on the doorstep. Goes right through the crease. And we're going to get a hand pass called here on the Axe Women. Faceoff will come outside. So in case you just missed it, Leah Byrne with a goal here for the Capers to cut Acadia's lead in half. And here she goes again. Byrne found some space. Nice stop from Jackson, though. So the goal goes into the books as Burn from Roland and Denny at 5.29, I believe, of this second period. And again, it's a big one for the Capers as they cut the lead to 2-1, but we've got a penalty coming here. And it's going to be on the Axe women. So Capers with their first power play opportunity. It's going to be a hook. And it's going to be Madison Firth going off. Madison Firth out of Brampton, Ontario. And as mentioned, this will be Cape Breton's first opportunity on the power play here this morning. LeBlanc wins that draw cleanly. Sends that one back to Victoria McIntyre. Over to LeBlanc now. Back to McIntyre. McIntyre quarterback in this power play. She gets the shot through, but Jackson's able to see that one. Little to no trouble making that stop. Faceoff will come to Jackson's left. And LeBlanc again wins the draw. It's back to Victoria McIntyre. Back to LeBlanc. LeBlanc fires it from the faceoff circle. Unable to get that one through. And Poirier back to LeBlanc. Back to the point for Victoria McIntyre. Over to Byrne, Cape Breton's goal scorer. Burn back to McIntyre. Cape Breton also employing the four forwards on the power play strategy, just as Acadia and the Hurricanes have. And the Capers will keep momentum in the Acadia zone here. Burn goes back to the point, back to McIntyre. Shoots off the back foot. That one is intercepted by Harvey. And no call there behind the net as McIntyre will send that one down to McNeil. Tried to find Poirier in front of the net, but that one just skids through. Back to McIntyre here at the blue line. McIntyre over to Robin LeBlanc now. Back to McIntyre. Over to Byrne. Good job from the penalty killers here for the Axe women. And nice dive there from McIntyre to maintain possession for the Capers. That shot goes a little bit wide, but Byrne's able to corral it at the blue line. Burn fires that one in, and bouncing puck there, and it goes in! The Capers have tied it up! On the power play, Robin LeBlanc, she's able to find that bouncing puck, and just like that, we've got a tie game here. It's 2-2. Two -two. So midway through this second period, the Capers have found that answer with two goals in about a minute and 45 seconds. And yes, I believe the goal will be credited to LeBlanc here. We'll see what the official announcement is from the timekeepers area. As the Axe women come out with the face off here. And Byrne knocks that one off of Atkinson's mask. But Cape Breton maintains possession here. 
And they send that one out. That's corralled by Norris. A couple of capers. Looks like they just ran into each other there at center ice as Atkinson brings it in. And so it goes into the books as LeBlanc from Poirier and Byrne at 7.18 of the second period. Meanwhile, we're going to see a hooking call here on the capers. That'll send Acadia right back to the power play. Looks like it'll be Morgan Marks going off here for Cape Breton. And so with 7.12 remaining in this second period, the Axe women go back to the power play with a chance to reclaim the lead. And frozen off the draw, Capers are able to get it out. And that one just goes down the ice. Cromwell there to retrieve it for the Axe women. Amelia Cromwell sends that one forward. Pass intended for Pike. Misfire on that. And Capers will just send that one right back down. Puck bounces through the legs of Norris behind the Acadia net. Sends it over to Cromwell. Cromwell up to Atkinson now. She'll send that one over to Ryan who gains the Cape, or Cape Breton blue line. She fires that one. Nice stop from Osmond. Up to the slot for Atkinson. Couldn't quite get everything on that shot. As Pike will send that one back to Ryan. Ryan down for Pike now. And Ryan will reclaim it. Send it back to the blue line here for Allie Norris. Norris over to Cromwell. That puck gets redirected, but Atkinson has it. Nice stop there from Osmond. A couple of Acadia bodies converge on her at the top of the crease. Looks like we won't see any calls out of that. Instead, just to face off here to Osmond's left. 6-11 left in this second period. 59 seconds left in the Acadia power play. And it'll be Atkinson and I believe Byrne there to take the draw for the Capers. And Atkinson will get thrown out of the faceoff circle. Pike to come in. And Byrne's able to control the puck there off the draw. She'll fire that one all the way around, get it into the Acadia zone, burning some valuable time on the penalty kill. Haley Dimmick back here with it. She'll send that one up for Atkinson. But Byrne converges on her pretty quickly there. Atkinson comes out with it. Melissa Atkinson chips that one up along the boards for Ryan. She just saw the puck at the last second there. Kate Breton able to fire that one back down. Here's Haley Dimmick with it. Sends that one forward. Now it's Legier coming up the middle of the ice. Legier with a goal in the first period. Nice move to get some open ice. Couldn't quite find the pass there. Acadia with good pressure here in the final 10 seconds of this power play. Bringing it back to the blue line. Firth down for Atkinson. Melissa Atkinson surveying her options. She takes the shot. Osmond with the save. And Legier with it as the Cape Breton penalty comes to an end. Legier comes out with it. She fires that one. Turned aside by Osmond. Back to full strength here as Firth has it. Her shot goes wide, and Byrne comes out with it here for Cape Breton. She tries to send that one up the middle of the ice, intercepted by Dimmick. And that one's recovered by Roland, but Acadia comes out with it here. Now's Ryan. She gains the Cape Breton blue line, fires it on net. Osmond able to turn that one aside. And McIntyre pressured by Breton there. But now Legier has it. Capers able to clear it. Here's Cromwell. And Cromwell goes back in. Didn't quite realize that Breton hadn't gone out. That's offside. 4.23 remaining in this second period. Seems like as good a time as any to remind our viewers that there will be a flood between the second and third period. So you'll get a little 15-minute break here. And that's coming up shortly as the Capers take control of that faceoff. And Hayes going back for it, pressured by a couple of Axe women there. Now here's Poirier with it. Alexa Poirier pressured by Hiltz. She's able to get that pass off to LeBlanc. LeBlanc gains the Acadia zone. 
Centering pass, intercepted. And Poirier couldn't quite get to that puck. It looked like she had an open net if she had. But Cape Breton's got it. Hayes trying to find LeBlanc there, but Breton with the good defensive play. And that one's over to Hayes. Cromwell's got it now. Hiltz will just fire that one deep into the Cape Breton zone. They'll get a wholesale line change here, but had to be kind of careful on that one. It looked like there were about seven or eight Axe women on the ice, but no call there as Brooke Switzer has it now. Switzer with the centering pass. Catro couldn't quite get that one on target. Now here's Legere with it. Down to Switzer, trying to find Catro in the middle of the ice. Couldn't quite. Catro, excuse me, back with it behind the net. Now Byrne will come out with it. Being pressured by Switzer and Catro. They force the turnover. Good pressure from the Axe women here is a bit of an answer to that brief Cape Breton flurry. And Osmond's able to cover that one up. Face off to the right of the Cape Breton goaltender. 2.52 left here in this second period. And we're all tied up at 2-2. And the Capers will come out with the draw here. And coming up the ice here with it is Marks. Marks still got it. And she gets dumped there. We're going to see an Acadia penalty. It looks like it'll be Firth going off again here. If I were a betting man, I'd be calling it interference as Acadia touches up. And it's going to be another hook here instead. So... Yeah, we'll see Madison Firth going back to the box here. So with 2.30 left here in the second period, the Capers going right back to the power play. That's what jump-started them earlier in this period was that early power play goal from Byrne. So we'll see if they can recreate that magic here the second time around. And the Axe women start by getting it out here straight away. And... Byrne sends that one over to Victoria McIntyre. Up to LeBlanc now. And Robin LeBlanc gains the zone. She'll cycle that one around the net. She's got some open ice to work with. And McIntyre keeps possession for the Capers. Robin LeBlanc in the corner. Victoria McIntyre now. Back to LeBlanc in the faceoff circle. Her shot goes a little bit wide. Now Byrne with it at the top of the other faceoff circle. Back to McIntyre, she fires off the back foot, bouncing puck there. Cape Breton gets the rebound, LeBlanc back to McIntyre. McIntyre over to Byrne. Good pressure there from Carey and Pike, the penalty killers up front here for Acadia. Byrne with it again here at the point, back to McIntyre. And, ooh, just kept that one in, but LeBlanc's got it from the faceoff dot. Can't quite get that one through. Now Poirier back to McIntyre here. Back down to Alexa Poirier. Victoria McIntyre dishes that one off to Byrne. Byrne fires that one in, and it goes! Robin LeBlanc, I believe, got a redirect on that. If so, that'll be her second of the morning, and that gives the Capers a 3-2 lead. 1-11 remaining here in this second period. So another effective power play here for Cape Breton. Good maintained possession for about a solid minute in the Acadia zone, and that eventually wore down the penalty killers, and they're able to get one through. So three unanswered goals here for the Capers in this second period. They take a 3-2 lead. And here they come again. Here's Abby McDonald skating that one in. She'll fire that one down. And McDonald pressured by Dimmick there behind the net. Puck comes out to the slot, and we've got another Acadia penalty here. And that's going to go down as interference. And so just like the second goal, it's going to go down as LeBlanc from Poirier and Byrne. And with 56 seconds remaining here in the period we've got an interference call against the Axe women so right back to the power play go the capers 
And it's Haley Dimmick who got called for interference on that. As Byrne controls it at the point, off the faceoff, Ryan able to get that one out. Victoria McIntyre back for this puck, pressured by Melissa Atkinson. McIntyre behind her net, she'll send it up to LeBlanc. She's got two here this morning. Sends that one up to McNeil. Carly McNeil setting this one up from the end boards. Back to Byrne at the point. And McIntyre can't quite corral it in her skates. So that one gets out. She'll send it back to Byrne. Ryan here on the four check. 18 seconds remaining in this second period. See if the Capers can come up with something. Instead, that puck goes into the Cape Breton bench. So with 12 seconds remaining here in this second period, Cape Breton still has a minute 16 left on this power play. And Cape Breton controls it off the faceoff here. Burn with it. We'll see if they can get in one last time. But Acadia sends that one down. And that'll just about do it for this second period. So as we go into an extended intermission here with an all-important flood between the second and third, the Capers have taken a 3-2 lead. We'll be back in about 15 minutes' time.
Holland College is located in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada. My name is Jess Cameron, the head coach of the Holland Hurricanes women's hockey team. The goals of the Holland Hurricanes uh, hockey program is to make it a reputable uh, varsity program um, with a high level of compete with other teams around Atlanta, Canada. Wi-Fi on Prince Edward Island is really like a sense of community. It is very nice and friendly. You can always find a friend or someone that you know. It's super like a small town atmosphere. Academic life is good. It's challenging to still get through with the support of my teachers and the classmates. But as long as you're organized, like it's it's pretty easy to manage. My impression on my instructors are amazing. They care about your future goals. They're passionate to what they're teaching. They really help balance the student athlete lifestyle. I think valuable aspects of playing post-secondary hockey is pretty limitless starting off with time management. Uh, I do believe that athletics help uh, keep students on track, knowing when assignments have to be done and homework has to be done before they get to the rink is actually a really helpful uh, piece in the student athlete's uh, experience. To be able to continue playing high level hockey is really important for me. I've been playing hockey since I was a little girl and being able to continue to play while going to school means a lot. Another positive aspect of playing a sport at the post-secondary level is uh, having an immediate support group. 20 odd teammates and coaches uh, is just an extra helping hand in the college process. The best part of being a student athlete is probably like you see your teammates all the time and then you see them at school and at the gym and it's just like you really have a sense of belonging. Being able to take my athletic skills and my academic skills and put them together, no matter where you go, around campus and there's always people like telling you like oh you had a good game or something like that so it's really a positive environment. One of the benefits of being an athlete at Holland College is the athletics department support, tons of media coverage, athletes of the week, uh, walking around campus. It's just a really positive environment with athletes from all sports interacting, smiling, talking about their performances over the weekend. My impressions on my coaches this year are amazing. They give us a lot of like really good feedback. It's nice having three female coaches. They've all played high level hockey so they know like how to balance like your schoolwork and with your practice time and game time and they're always there at the gym to like cheer us on and stuff so it's really supportive. As a coach uh, while I'm recruiting I'm definitely looking for a good balance in you know speed, skill and hockey IQ. They need to be ready to compete every day and have the commitment level to play at a collegiate level. We're looking for players that are well-rounded individuals um, we look for good, strong characters in our locker room. They also have to be able to balance a uh, collegiate academic schedule um, with their athletic experience. Atlanta, Canada definitely has a high level of women's hockey. The competition that we play against is very talented girls. Our ages kind of vary from younger athletes to a little bit older athletes, but everybody's really competitive. If someone and we are back here for the third period of this second game of Atlantic Collegiate Hockey Association action. And just to reset the scene here for you, the Cape Breton University Capers, they hold a 3-2 lead over the Acadia Axe women here. And that's big because if the Capers can hold on and win in regulation, well, actually any win for the Capers, that will eliminate Acadia and that'll have tomorrow's final set. And yet the Capers will still play the Holland Hurricanes tonight at 7.55 p.m. And we are just about set to go here for this third period. And here we go. Capers control it off the draw. And here's McIntyre with it. McIntyre sends that one back. And as a reminder, Cape Breton still on the power play here. Acadia clears that one. Switzer in pursuit. Osmond will cover that one up. We'll see what kind of message Acadia head coach Curtis Weatherby had for his players here because this is obviously a must win for Acadia. And Capers will take that one off the draw. McIntyre back for Byrne. Byrne sends that one up to LeBlanc. 
LeBlanc stick handling through the neutral zone. Now here's McNeil. Back to Robin LeBlanc. She's got two this morning already. Burn over to McIntyre. Victoria McIntyre fires. Stopped by Jackson. And the Capers will keep this puck in. 15 seconds left on the Caper power play here. LeBlanc lost it in her skates there for a moment. And she's surveying her options. She'll go down low here for Poirier. Back to LeBlanc. As the final few seconds tick away here, McIntyre back to LeBlanc. She fires and gets it right back off the rebound. Fires again. And that is stopped there by Jackson. Yes, it was stopped. Face off to Jackson's left here. So Capers using that early power play, getting some good pressure here in the early going, but we'll see what kind of momentum the Axe women get off that kill. And Roland wins that draw for the Capers. And falling at the blue line, there was the Capers defender. Now here's Norris with it. Ali Norris with the shot, redirected by Osmond. And Ryan sent that one back up the middle. Here's Firth with it. Firth gets the shot through, but Osmond's able to see it going along the ice. She makes the stop. Face off coming to her right. And don't be surprised if you see a lot of this top line here for Acadia in this third period featuring Atkinson and Ryan as Norris fires that one. Cape Breton now with it. They send it forward, but it's kept in there by Aaron Casibo. And Atkinson with it there. And just about bounced in there, but Osmond able to see it through the traffic. She freezes that one. So face off will once again come to Osmond's right here. And yeah, Zebra gets to the other side. There we go. And we are all set to go. Victoria McIntyre controlling it, pressured by Pike, sends it around. And that was held in there by Jesse McIntyre. Fired on net, goes in behind the caper goal. McIntyre and Pike battling for it there. Now Mark's unable to handle that one. Here's Pike with it. Good pressure from Victoria McIntyre to knock the puck loose. And Sage Breton battling for it, but here's Sloan with it now. Sloan sends that one forward to Burn. Burn has a goal here in this one, and she had eight in the regular season, so always a threat to score whenever she's on the ice. And that puck is sent back for Hayes. Hayes fires that one up, but Hiltz gets it on the half wall there. Shot from a bad angle goes behind the Cape Breton net. And Denny sends that one up for Sloan. Sloan over to Byrne now. Byrne being pressured by Switzer, just fresh on the ice here. And Legier, good job getting back defensively there. And now here's Maddie Carey chipping it out of the Acadia zone. Denny back to retrieve it. Denny sends that one up. Here's Emma Rowland with it. She stumbles, but she's still able to get it out. And here's Sloan. Nicole Sloan chips it into the Acadia zone, but Cromwell's there to retrieve it. Cromwell sends it up for Carey. Redirects it out, but it looks like it's going to go all the way down. And no icing on the play. We're going to say Denny could have done a little bit more to get back on that, potentially. But nevertheless, play goes on. Capers will fire this one down. This should go down as icing here. And indeed it does. So face off in the Cape Breton zone here with 11.18 left in the third period. While we've got a moment, we will once again take the time to acknowledge our sponsors here. Keepitsocial.ca, Holland College Student Union, Sports Center Physiotherapy, Pressed for Time and Abigail Screen Printing and Embroidery, Mind Matters Mental Performance Training, Hunter's Ale House, The Factory, Charlottetown Beer Garden, John Brown Richmond Street Grill, Coach Atlantic, PEI Source for Sports, East Coast Cresting, Boston Pizza, Tim Hortons, Wendy's, DP Murphy Incorporated, ADL, Pepsi, 
City of Charlottetown, Domino's Pizza, Holland College, Holland College Canes Camp, Holland Hurricanes Academy, and Hurricanes Physiotherapy. Face off here in the caper zone, controlled by the Axe women. Harvey's shots blocked there, as is Ryan's follow up, as Byrne sends that one forward. Pass intercepted there by Harvey. McNeil able to get that one in. Here's Byrne. Byrne on the backhand. Oh, nice stop there from Sarah Jackson as Byrne just got turned around onto her backhand. And looks like Norris had gotten hauled down behind the play. Play goes on though. And Atkinson goes tumbling toward the Cape Breton goal here as Cape Breton will take this one out. Alexa Poirier up the ice. Poirier finds some open space there. Oh, her centering pass just goes through the crease. And Atkinson will chip that one out. Icing waved off. And back to retrieve that puck is Hayes. Over to Victoria McIntyre now. And Poirier going for it. Hiltz gets her from behind, though. And Breton in there applying more pressure for the Axe Women. Here's Pike with it. Puck kind of rolls off her stick there just in front of the net. And Osmond's able to see that one. She covers that one up. 9.45 left in the third period. Cape Breton still holding a 3-2 lead. Face-off will come to the left of Capers goaltender Caitlin, or Kayla Osmond here, excuse me. And Cape Breton wins the draw, going high off the glass there, and they get it out. Back is Dimmick being pressured by a couple of Cape Breton four checkers. She'll send that one up for Breton. Breton here now at the face-off circle. She fires. Osmond able to see that one right into the chest as well. Face-off coming to her right. Kayla Osmond turning in a strong performance here for the Capers and a big reason why they're up 3-2 here midway through this third period. And a scramble draw there is going to be controlled by Dimmick, the blue line. She'll send that one in deep. And Marks has it now for the Capers. She'll send that one into Acadia territory. Dimmick back for it for Acadia. Haley Dimmick bringing it up the middle of the ice here. Sends it forward for Brooke Switzer. Switzer, as mentioned earlier, an ACHA All-Star this season. And Switzer's got it again here in the corner. Switzer makes her way out. Centering pass just goes through the top of the crease there. Kate Breton back with it. Morgan Marks here with it. She'll send it forward. Now Brandy Harvey's got it for the Axe Women. And somehow that pass finds Legere in Acadia or Cape Breton territory. Legere fires. And referee lost sight of the puck, even though it was still out. Legere in disbelief over that. But nevertheless, ref loses sight. That's when you see play stop. So with 8.37 remaining, face off to the right of Kayla Osmond. And the Capers control it off the faceoff. Here's Byrne. Byrne gets around Cromwell. Nice burst of speed. Tried to cut through, but Harvey there to stop that. And the Capers will fire that one in deep. Byrne's got it. Leah Byrne out front. And she's got it again behind the Acadia goal. Sends it back out to the point for Music. And Ryan looks like she might have hurt herself on that play. She's going off a little bit gingerly. We'll keep an eye on that situation here for Acadia as the Capers fire it down the ice. No icing on the play as Firth goes back for it. And Firth's clearing attempt hits a couple of skates. Cape Breton keeps it in. There's Byrne with it. And McNeil pressuring Casibo there. And open hand. Thought there might have been a call on that one, but play continues. And here's Denny with it here for the Capers. And Breton takes it over. Oh, just missed there. Looked like that was Pike right up at the top of the crease. And 
Acadia's got it back in their own zone. Madison Firth with it. She'll direct that one forward to Pike. Pike starts her way around the Cape Breton net here. Pressured by a couple of Capers there. And Dauphiny comes out with the puck here for Cape Breton. Poked away, but Cape Breton maintains possession here as Carly McNeil gains the red line. McNeil sends that one in, Poirier into chase. And another bouncing puck in front of the net, and Jackson's able to see that one. Freeze it, 6.44 remaining. Face off to Jackson's right here. And, and Byrne controls it off the faceoff here. Just about got through the Acadia defense there, but got that poked away. And Acadia will take this one out. Legier with the pass over to Switzer. Switzer gains the blue line, fires it just wide. Sarah Cottrell with it. She'll send it back to the point for Jesse McIntyre. Fires it in deep. Now here's Legier with it. And that one just goes through the crease. So Acadia, with no shortage of opportunities here, just can't get one in the back of the net. Jesse McIntyre with it. She fires. That one's blocked. And there's Byrne firing it all the way around. Kept in by Dimmick. So sustained pressure here from the Axe women as Switzer maintains the cycle here. Dimmick fires that one wide. And the Capers are able to get that one out. Sloan will gain possession, and she gets hauled down. Just an open stick there, and Haley Dimmick's going to get called for, I believe, a trip. And to say Acadia is not overly pleased with the officiating at the moment might be a bit of an understatement here, as the Capers will go back to the power play, 544 remaining in the third period. And my, my, what an insurance goal would do for Cape Breton on this man advantage here. But it starts with Casibo clearing it out to burn some valuable time. As we see Ryan, good to see Lily Ryan after going off injured on that last shift. But Cape Breton gets it. Burn up to McNeil. McNeil gains the Acadia blue line. Carly McNeil, she's going to slow it down and set things up. Over to Robin LeBlanc. She's got two on the power play already this morning. Now Burn with it. Burn in there and what a tic-tac-toe and Carly McNeil's there to just tap it in. And we said it a moment ago, there's an insurance goal for Cape Breton. It is now 4-2 Capers. 5-14 left in the third period. And Capers coach Derek Hayes has to be loving what he is seeing out of his players, particularly from about the start of the second period on. They've really taken advantage or taken control of this game here as we see the Switzer kind of jumping the gun in the faceoff circle here. And we'll do it all over again here. It'll be, it was carrying the Blanc in the circle as Switzer's got it. Acadia pressuring here. They need to get one relatively quickly here as Cromwell will keep this in. And Cape Breton will send that one down the ice. So that goal goes into the books as McNeil from Byrne and McIntyre here and so with 4.45 left in this third period, Cape Breton really in the driver's seat here on this one, just can't really afford to let their foot off the gas here though, because Acadia can strike quickly. As we'll see Maddie Carey take the puck out here for the Axe women, now Legier gains the blue line. Abby Legier, who's had a strong weekend here for Acadia, she maintains pressure, but Cape Breton gets the puck. Dauphiny's got it. Carey gets it for the Axe women, though. And just pinned up against the boards there. We've got a few people converging on the puck. Cape Breton just content to freeze it and burn a little bit of time. 
But play goes on here. Sloan's got it. Sloan sends it around the net. Dauphiny will be there to pick it up. Jody Dauphiny sends it forward, but Acadia is able to keep it in. And there's Sage Breton with it. She tries to send it on net, but that's intercepted. Kept in at the blue line. And nice redirect there from Hiltz, but Osmond able to see it all the way. And so with 3.38 remaining, Cape Breton still holds a 4-2 advantage. Face off to Caitlin, Kayla Osmond's left. And looks like we're gonna get a timeout here for Acadia. Smart move here from coach Curtis Weatherby. 3.38 remaining, down two goals. Got to get something here quickly, or you're looking at potential elimination for the top seed here. And indeed, it should be announced as an Acadia timeout here momentarily. And while we do that, we'll take a moment to once again acknowledge our sponsors. Once again, we have keepitsocial.ca, PEI Cannabis, Holland College Student Union, Sports Center Physiotherapy, Pressed for Time, Abiquit Screen Printing and Embroidery, Mind Matters Metal Performance Training, Hunter's Ale House, The Factory, Charlottetown Beer Garden, John Brown Richmond Street Grill, Coach Atlantic, PEI Source for Sports, East Coast Cresting, Boston Pizza, Tim Hortons, Wendy's, DP Murphy Incorporated, ADL, Pepsi, City of Charlottetown as we get an icing call there on the capers, Domino's Pizza, Holland College, Holland College Canes Camp, Holland Hurricanes Academy, and Hurricanes Physiotherapy. So by way of a quick reset here, 3.28 remaining in the third period, Cape Breton leading 4-2. And Capers will take it behind their own net. Burn fires it around. Firth there to get it at the blue line for Acadia. Firth fires. That one goes a little wide. And Atkinson's got it back. She'll send it back to Bur Firth. Excuse me. Firth fires again. That one's blocked. Cape Breton gets it out of the zone. Firth with it. Sends it to Atkinson. Melissa Atkinson here with it. Sends it forward. Attempted to find Norris, but pass intercepted by the Capers defender. That shot goes wide. Kept in by Aaron Casibo. She fires. Can't quite get that one all the way through. Atkinson battling in front of the net there with McIntyre. And Cape Breton will come out with it. They're content to just send it down. And that one is going to be picked up before an icing can be called. I think it might have been waved off anyway. As... Atkinson sends it up to Switzer. Brooke Switzer now, nice shot. Osmond, better save. 2.23 left in this third period. And indeed, we'll have to take a look at the Acadia goal here. We'll have to see when they want to get Sarah Jackson out in favor of the extra attacker. 2.23, they're not making the move just yet. But if Acadia gets possession here, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Weatherby calls for his goaltender. But Cape Breton gets possession here. Now Dimmick with it. Haley Dimmick will send that one down. Abby Legier with it. And I don't know if you can hear it from our other microphone. Fans are calling for the goalie to get pulled. Dimmick shot stopped by Osmond. And that takes us down to 156 remaining. And realistically, they need, need to, and looks like they're bringing Jackson out a little bit, just watching to see if Acadia gets possession off the draw here. And Acadia does, Jackson's still watching for the bench, and Byrne fires that one down, that's gonna be waved off, Cromwell touched that. Amelia Cromwell with it here. She'll send that one forward. Cape Breton keeps it in. And now Dimmick with it. Haley Dimmick pressured there by Nicole Sloan. Dimmick brings it out of Acadia territory. Here comes Jackson. 
Jackson's off, empty net here for Acadia. Minute 20 remaining. Acadia needing two to force overtime here. And the Axe women, they can't keep it in as Byrne will fire it. First able to block that one at the Acadia blue line. Now Switzer unable to get to that puck. Dauphiny tries to fire. Can't quite get it there. Atkinson applying the pressure. 53 seconds remaining in this third period. Dauphiny still with it. She fires and that's gonna go all the way down the ice. So we're gonna get a set play here. 45 seconds remaining. Acadia down 4-2. They need a couple here. And faceoff will come to the left of Kayla Osmond. And it looks like we've got another timeout here on the ice. And to reset the scene here for you, 45 seconds remaining in this third period. Cape Breton leading this one 4-2. Acadia controls the draw. Madison first with the shot. That gets through and it's in! That shot gets through. We still have a game here, folks. It looks like Norris might have redirected that one over the shoulder of Osmond. And with 38 seconds remaining, it's a 4-3 hockey game here. So we are in for yet another barn burner of a finish just like last night. It's been an exciting opening two games here at the Atlantic Collegiate Hockey Association Championship. So if you're anywhere near Cavendish Farms Wellness Center this evening and you're free around 7.55, get down here to watch the host Holland Hurricanes take on the Cape Breton University Capers as we get another icing on Cape Breton here. 29 seconds remaining, Acadia just down one. Jackson once again pulled, so we'll see a six on five situation here. And you can sort of feel the momentum shifting here as Acadia is going to be applying pressure. And that one's deflected out of play here. And it's going to come outside. Which, yes, off the deflection, that is logical once you take the time to think about it. 25 seconds remaining here. Atkinson to take the draw here against LeBlanc. Acadia wins it. Sends it out wide there for Ryan. Ryan trying to find Switzer in the middle. Firth with it in the slot. Madison Firth fires. Puck still loose. And Acadia still got it. Ryan with it. And Cape Breton gets it out. And Ryan fires it down, Cape Breton with possession. Three seconds remaining, and that is gonna do it. The Cape Breton University Capers, they take this one by a final score of 4-3. And based on this being such a short tournament, that actually determines tomorrow's final. So the next two games you're gonna see over the course of the weekend, tonight, 7.55 p.m., these same Capers will take on the Holland Hurricanes. And then they'll do it all over again Sunday afternoon at 2.20. This time with the gold medal, or championship, excuse me, at stake. Stick around and we'll find out who the players of the game are for each team. Next voice you'll hear is that of the public address announcer.
And Leah Byrne turned in a strong performance here in the opening game for the Capers. Goal and a couple of assists here. And Abby Legere, I would suggest probably Acadia's best player over the course of the weekend. Well deserving of the player of the game nod. And once again, as a reminder, as we see the two teams set to shake hands after a hard fought game, please join us again at 7.55 this evening. As once again, we'll see these Cape Breton University Capers take on the Holland College Hurricanes. And then, yeah, tomorrow afternoon, Cape Breton and Holland, you'll be able to see that one on Bell TV One, channels one and 401 if you're a Bell 5 TV subscriber. But for now, for my cameraman and colleague, Mr. Mason Murray, my name is Jordi Carraher. We will see you later this evening.